Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I will explain about YOLO V8 architecture. Before explaining the whole YOLO V8 architecture, I will explain details of YOLO V8 blocks so that you can understand more easily. The most commonly used block is the convolutional block. In YOLO V8, a convolutional block consists of a 2D convolutional layer, a 2D batch normalization, and a silo activation function. They are all fused together into a single convolutional block. Next one is the C2F block. This block contains a convolutional block which then the resulting feature maps will be split. One goes to the bottleneck block, whereas the other goes directly into the concat block. In C2F block, we can have many bottleneck blocks. At the end, there is another convolutional block. Bottleneck itself is a sequence of convolutional blocks with a shortcut. If you are familiar with ResNet block, bottleneck block is pretty similar to ResNet block. The difference is that there is a bottleneck without a shortcut. The SPPF block is next. SPPF stands for Spatial Pyramid Pooling Fast. It is a modification of SPP or Spatial Pyramid Pooling with a higher speed. Inside SPPF, there are convolutional blocks at the beginning and followed by three 2D max pooling layers. The interesting part is that every resulting feature map is concatenated right before the end of SPPF. SPPF is ending with a convolutional block. The last block is the detect block. This is where the detection happens. Different from the previous YOLO version, YOLO V8 is an anchor free model. The predictions happen in the grid cell. The detect block contains two tracks. The first track is for bounding box prediction, whereas the other is for class prediction. Both tracks has the same block sequence which is two convolutional blocks and a single 2D convolutional layer. Following that, I will explain some of the fundamental components of a convolutional neural network. First there is the kernel. The kernel is a two-dimensional array. Kernel are usually called feature detectors. The value in the kernel is weights which can be updated during the training process. Kernel will move across the image and perform a dot operation between the input and the value of the kernel to produce an output. The output is also known as a feature map. Next is the stride. The stride is defined as the displacement distance during the convolution process. The smaller the resulting output, the larger the stride. Convolution with stride 1 is demonstrated in this example. Then there is the padding. Padding is adding value to the outermost element of the image. In PyTorch, there are several types of padding. First, there is serious padding. This is the default padding type. In the serious padding, the padded pixels will have a value of zero. And then there is replication padding. In the replication padding, the padded pixels will have the same value as the closest real pixel. The padded corners will have the same value as the real corners. Next, the YOLO V8 architecture. In general, the YOLO architecture is divided into three parts. There are the backbone, neck, and head. Backbone is the deep learning architecture that basically acts as a feature extractor. The neck combines the features acquired from the various layers of the backbone model. The head predicts the classes and bounding box regions, which is the final output produced by the object detection model. However, the neck is not explicitly mentioned in YOLO V8. The term neck is only written in the official YOLO V8 documentation. On the YOLO V8 architecture file, YOLO V8.yml, there are only two parts, the backbone and the head. Next, I will explain the whole YOLO V8 architecture. This architecture drawing is based on YOLO V8 architecture file, YOLO V8.yml, which is located in models V8 folder. It is also heavily inspired by the drawing from Rains King, a GitHub user who posted an issue in YOLO V8 GitHub repository. We made some modifications to the drawing to make it more readable and align with the YOLO V8 source code itself. The explanation of architecture begins with an explanation of the three parameters that define the YOLO V8 variant. These parameters are depth multiple with multiple and max channels. The depth multiple parameters determine how many bottleneck blocks are in C2F block. The width multiple and max channels parameters determine the output channel. The YOLO V8 input is an image with three channels. Next, the backbone. The name of the backbone in YOLO V8 is not stated directly on the backbone. 
Its backbone is made up of numerous convolution layers that extract distinct features at various resolution levels. Before continuing on the explanation of the layers on the backbone, I will explain about the numbering on the YOLO V8 architecture. This numbering is based on the architecture file, which is YOLO V8.yaml. Numbering starts from the backbone section and starting from zero. For example, this convolution block is the first block in the architecture, so we assign it the number zero. And we draw the block as shown below. This numbering continues until the last C2OF block. This backbone begins with two convolutional blocks with kernel size 3, stride size 2, and padding 1. The spatial resolution of the output is reduced when stride 2 is used. For example, if the input resolution in the first convolutional block is 640 by 640, the output resolution after processing will be 320 by 320. To obtain the output channel, use the following formula. This formula is obtained from the code in the tasks.py file. First, we find the minimum value between the base output channel and max channels. The minimum value then multiplied by the width multiple parameters. For example, we will calculate the first convolutional blocks output channel using the YOLO V8L variant with a width multiple of 1 and the max channels of 512. The base output channel in the first convolutional block is 64. So, here is the calculation. First, we find the minimum value between 64 and 512, then multiply it by 1. The result is 64. 64 is the output channel in the first convolutional block if you use the YOLO V8L. You can analyze the second convolutional block with the same way as the first one. Next is the C2F block. This block contains two parameters, shortcut and end. The shortcut parameters in this block is true indicating that the shortcut will be used on the bottleneck block, whereas n determines how many bottleneck blocks are used. The n value is calculated by multiplying the depth multiple value by 3. Next, there is another convolutional block with a kernel size of 3, stripe 2, and padding 1. The C2F block comes next, with the shortcut parameters true and n parameters equal to 6 multiplied by the depth multiple. This block's output is also connected to the neck. Next, there is another convolutional block with a kernel size of 3, stride 2, and padding 1. And then another C2F block with the shortcut parameters true and n parameters equal to 6 multiplied by the depth multiple. This block's output is also connected to the neck. Next, there is another convolutional block with a kernel size of 3, stride 2, and padding 1. After that, there is C2F block with the shortcut parameters true and the n parameters equal to 3 multiplied by the depth multiple. This block will be connected to SPPF. SPPF, Spatial Pyramid Pooling Fast, is used after the last convolution layer on the backbone. The main function of the SPPF is to generate a fixed feature representation of objects of various sizes in an image without resizing the image or introducing spatial information loss. Following that, an explanation of the neck. First, there is the upsample layer. This layer is used to increase the feature map resolution of the SPPF to match with the feature map resolution of this C2F block. The upsample feature map will be combined with the features from this C2F block using Comcat. When using Comcat, the number of channels is summed up, whereas the resolution is unchanged. For example, we will compute the concatenation of this C2F block feature map and this upsample feature map. We use the YOLO V et al variant. The output of this C2F block is 40 by 40 by 512, and the upsample output is 40 by 40 by 512. The result of concatenation is 40 by 40 by 1024. The following is C2F block. On the neck, C2F block does not employ a shortcut, and the value of n equal to 3 multiplied by the depth multiple. The resolution of the C2F block feature map will be upsampled to match the resolution of the feature map of this C2F block. Using Concat, the upsample feature map will be combined with the features from this C2F block. Next, there is another C2F block. This block will reduce the channel size of the feature map. The feature map of this block will be used as an input for the detect block. This detect block is specialized for detecting small objects. The output of this block is also used as an input to this convolutional block. The convolutional block uses a kernel size of 3, stride 2, and padding 1. 
the resolution of the feature map will be reduced by half using this block. Furthermore, concat will be used to combine the feature map from this convolutional block with the feature map from this C2F block. Next, there is another C2F block. This block will reduce the channel size of the feature map. The feature map of this block will be used as input for the detect block. This detect block is specialized for detecting medium-sized objects. The output of this block is also used as input to this convolutional block. The convolutional block uses a kernel size of 3, stride 2, and padding 1. Next, concat will be used to combine the feature map from this convolutional block with the feature map from SPPF block. Finally, there is another C2F block. This block's feature map will be utilized as an input for the detect block. This detect block is specialized for detecting large objects. That's all the explanation about YOLO V8 architecture. Eager to know how to greatly improve speed and accuracy by modifying YOLO V8 architecture? Click the link in the description.